Plants vs. Zombies 2 is a big game with a lot of worlds. Each world is different and has unique plants and zombies. In every world, you will unlock plants to help take on the zombie hordes, like Colonel Pult for defeating seagull zombies or Lightning Weed for chickens, for example. But some worlds just have plants that suck, plants that are just not great. With every world having a best plant, each world is bound to have a worst plant. In this video, I will go over what I think is the worst plant of each world in PvZ2. But what determines if a plant is bad? Well, I will decide how bad the plants are based on how powerful they are and how versatile they are throughout the game. Now, to start things off, just like last time, we have the tutorial, aka Player's House. Every plant in the tutorial is a solid plant for starting off the game, and I think each one is pretty well balanced. The worst plant is certainly not Sunflower, as I put that as the best plant in the last video. So that leaves Walnut, Potato Mine, Key Shooter, and Cabbage Bolt. Walnut serves as a wall slash staller, Potato Mine is an insta, Key Shooter and Cabbage are both attackers. Since Walnut and Potato Mine both serve a unique role, it's not them. That just leaves Pea Shooter and Cabbage Bolt, which serves the same purpose of attacking. They are nearly identical in stats, so just choose the one you dislike more. I like Pea Shooter more, which makes Cabbage Bolt the worst plant of the tutorial. Ancient Egypt has 6 plants. Honestly, I like all of them. Bloomerang is good, Vapido is good, Iceberg is awesome, Twin Sunflower is a very strong sun producer. There's no way it's the worst plant. And we also have Bonk Jesus. Jesus. Best paired with Johnny. That leaves the Grave Buster looking ah plant. It's not necessarily bad, but it's not really that great either. Grave Buster struggles because it's bad when there are a lot of graves because it's recharge. And when there are a few graves, your attacking plants generally get the job of destroying graves done. I would rather use the seed slot Grave Buster takes up on something else. Grave Buster, in my opinion, is the worst plant of ancient Egypt. Pirate Seas has an arsenal of great plants. Cherry Bomb is one of the OG instas and is still good even to this day with all the power creep. Snapdragon is great. Though, there is a better version. For me, it came down to Spikeweed and Springbean for the worst plant of Pirate Seas. Spikeweed is not that bad. It has great utility in the world, being able to deal with barrels, and is just a decent plant. Springbean, while being really good in Pirate Seas, basically having a Doomshroom-like plant food in the world, but just about everywhere else, Springbean is useless. It just kind of exists after a Pirate Seas, not doing all that much. While Spikeweed still has some use outside of Pirate Seas, like Piano Zombie for example. That is why Springbean is the worst plant of Pirate Seas. This one's not that hard. Out of all the plants in Wild West, it's definitely Split Pea. Split Pea is just not that good. All of the other Wild West plants are more versatile slash valuable than Split Pea. Lightning Weed is great, the melons are OP, Peapod is underrated but really strong, and Chili Bean makes Chili Fiesta Pollo Chipotle farts. Split Pea's gimmick is shooting backwards to counter zombies that get to the left side of the lawn. There are other ways to deal with these threats rather than Split Pea, like Horror Kill or pretty much any Insta. For most of the game, zombies don't even go to the left side of the lawn, making Split Pea's gimmick not very useful. Split Pea is only useful in a couple small sections of the game. Wild West, a few Jurassic Marsh levels, and a couple modern day level. Split Pea is the worst plant of Wild West. For a Future has a lot of really good plants in it, like Blovo, Magnifying Grass, and Tile Tone-Up. But when it comes to the worst plant of For a Future, there is one obvious standout, and that plant is Citron. Unlike in the Shooto games, Citron is hot garbage. In the time it takes Citron to shoot, you can run a full campaign for president and get cancelled. Anyways, while we wait for Citron to shoot, let's talk about Raid Shadow Legends. 
The point is, Citron is slower than going to the DMV when you need to renew your license plate. Using Citron is asking for your brains to get eaten on a silver plate. One upside of using literally any other plant than Citron is that it does not freaking suck. This $700 little box is a better value than Citron. Editing Wolfie note, Citron is actually not that bad, it's just the worst of for a future in my opinion. Each Dark Ages plant is good, so even if it's the worst plant, it's still not bad. For me, the worst plant of Dark Ages came down to Sunbeam and Magnet Shroom. Sunbeam makes sun, but relies on high health zombies, making Sunbeam not the most reliable. And Magnet Shroom pulls headgear off zombies. I ended up going with Magnet Shroom as the worst plant of Dark Ages, because Magnet Shroom is, well, Magnet Shroom. Magnet Shroom is a lot like other plants on this list. It's not bad, but it's the worst plant of the plant in its world. Big Wave Beach has good plants and bad plants. Banana is bananas, so it can't be the worst because it's bananas. And Bowling Bob is OP. That leaves Lilypad, Tango Kelp, and Guacodile. Lilypad is needed to beat Big Wave Beach and more of a tool plant anyways, so I'm not going to put it as the worst plant. I ended up going with Guacodile as the worst plant of Big Wave Beach since it's basically just a jalapeno from Walmart. For the same cost of jalapeno at 125 sun, Guacodile barely defeats anything above a conehead in its lane. It also doubles as a more expensive pea shooter, but who is using pea shooter on Big Wave Beach? Guacodile is like a combination of pea shooter and jalapeno that excels at being worse than both. Guacodile is the worst plant of Big Wave Beach. It's clearly hot potato. None of the other Frostbite Caves plants even come close to being as bad as hot potato. Even Pepper Pult is better than hot potato. And Pepper Pult sucks. Pepper Pult would be the worst Frostbite Caves plant if it was not for Hot Potato existing. Hot Potato is bad because it's power creeped by Hedo plants, like Fire Pea and Pepper Pult, which can infinitely keep your plants warm. Hot Potato can only thaw one plant at a time, slowly. Do I even have to say it? You know which plant is the worst here. Hot Potato. Lost City has 5 amazing plants. Or should I say 4? Red Stinger is an amazing attacker. It's just a better repeater. Aki is like Bloomerang, but a Lava. Endorian is a spiky walnut. And Stalia is a really good semi-insta staller, able to stall big groups. And then we have Goldleaf. Goldleaf will turn one tile on the lawn into a gold tile, which will produce sun when a plant is planted on it. This in theory is really strong. The problem with Goldleaf is its horrendous recharge of 50 seconds, basically eliminating its viability as a sun producer. Especially in PvZ2's meta where the game is very fast paced. It just takes too long to get Goldleafs down. Goldleaf is not even good as a secondary sun producer either, as Goldbloom, Solo Sage, or just another primary sun producer like Primal Sunflower will be better than Goldleaf. Goldleaf is the worst plant of Lost City. Neon Mixtape Tour is one of, if not the coolest world in PvZ2, but most of the plants in this world are just bad. The bad plants in this world are Intensive Carrot, Spore Shroom, Garlic, and Fat Beat. Garlic on its own and especially in this world is the definition of more useless than the FBI warnings on DVDs. But I don't think Garlic or Fat Beat are the worst plants of Neon Mixtape Tour. That leaves Spore Shroom and Intensive Carrot. I personally think the Carrot is more useless, as I forget it even exists on a regular basis. Intensive Carrots can revive a fallen plant. It is unique, just not ever really worth the seed slot. Intensive Carrot is the worst plant of Neon Mixtape Tour. Isn't it obvious? Literally every plant in this world is a direct upgrade of pre-existing plants. What's not to like? Oh yeah, then we got this cologne looking mushroom. Cologne mushroom is the worst plant of Jurassic Marsh. 
and just not a great plant in general. Cologne mushroom will disable dinos, making them help you a little bit. It's not really worth bringing in general due to a high sun cost, long recharge, and somewhat niche use. And just look at its competition. It was never going to be the best plant of Jurassic Marsh when you are competing with some of the best plants in the game, like Primal Potato Mine and Primal Sunflower of all things. Though, getting dinosaurs high is something we can all aspire to, right? Or is that just me? Anyways. I like the shadow plants, but Grimrose just ain't it. Grimrose is like a 75 sun cost tango kelp that can be planted on land. It's not a bad plant, but I think the other shadow plants in modern day are just better. Dusk Labo is better because, duh. Moonflower is also better because, duh. Shadow Shroom would be the worst plant of modern day, but Shadow Shroom has a really strong plant food. That just leaves Nightshade and Grimrose. I think Grimrose is overall worse because of its long recharge of 20 seconds, so it's not really spammable and does not do that much. Nightshade has a faster recharge of only 5 seconds and can provide constant damage for a really cheap price of 75 sun. Grimrose is the worst plant of modern day. And that is the worst plant of every world in PvZ2. Just as a bit of a disclaimer, every plant I went over in this video is not bad. I think every plant here is at least viable if you use it the right way. So, if one of the plants here is your favorite, keep using it, they're all still good. Subscribe, like the video, and until next time, see you in the next one.